Hey guys, Snoopy here. Today we're going to be looking over the resources in arcs, and specifically, we're going to be looking over how they can combine to take very powerful actions. So in arcs, you have resources, and these resources can be spent before you take any actions from your action card, and this is called your prelude. And so this is a prelude action. There are certain guild cards that have prelude actions. A few lore cards have prelude actions. But in general, in your prelude, the main thing you're doing is spending resources. Now, the question often is, when should I spend it? What should I be aiming to do with a material or a weapon or a psionic? And here, the idea is that if you save your resource till you can pair it with another resource, you're going to have a more powerful turn. You can pair this with two, three, even four resources, but generally we're talking about combinations or pairs. We're thinking of two. So either one fuel and a weapons or fuel material or a relic and a psionic or two psionics or two fuel. And that's kind of what we're thinking through. And we're just going to cover four cases today, but I think that this is going to be helpful if you're starting out your arcs journey. So the first combination we're going to look at is a psionic and a relic. So a psionic says that you can take any action of the lead card and you do this during your prelude. And then relic says that you can take the secure action. So if the court is like so, where there's no agents on any of these guild cards and we have a lead card that is um, an administration card or mobilization card, then you can spend a psionic so we'll spin a psionic, and we're influencing um, oil keepers here. And then we'll spend a relic. And now we get to secure this skill card. Okay, and we get our agent back. And now this is predicated on having a mobilization or uh, admin card. But that's how psionic and relic can combine together to be very powerful. So if I just had the relic, I would need to have already taken my turn with an action card, place agents there, hope ever give everyone else a chance to place agents there, and then contend for it. But here, I can just take this for free because no one had any agents to block it. So one counter to this combination of a psionic and a relic is to put agents in the court like so. So if I have these agents here and other players cannot use the relic and psionic combo because they would need two psionics to, to influence in their prelude and if they don't do in their prelude then everyone else has a chance to respond okay our next combination we're looking at is fuel and material um, the main interesting thing with this is that you can do this either way so for example i can do a material then a fuel or fuel then material and we'll look at why that order may matter so in this instance if we look at our map right here we have cluster two is completely open so everyone moved out of the gates from the get-go they claimed empty building slots but there's this empty cluster here in two. So let's say blue wants to take advantage of that. So what they can do is they can spend a fuel. They can move as many ships as they want. So they can move all four, or they can just move three here. They go to the gate, and they can move over here, and they keep continuing until they go to an empty planet or a gate controlled by someone else. So they go to this empty planet here. This two-slot planet seems nice. And now they can spend a material to immediately build something here. So they could do a city, they could do starport. Now, they could also go in here and move into this space and take this spot from white. They could also move into a gate, drop a ship off, and then go in. So now this gate is protected so that red, for instance, can't move in and go immediately to this relic spot they now have to stop at the gate they could also do the same thing here with gate one so this is one way to be defensive protecting um i will say that this is not the perfect defense because gate six five and four are open but if there were ships here 
uh, this would be a really good strategy for blue just to leave two ships behind and just one ship here, build a starport with their material, and now they can start building up a big fleet. So this is how you can think about fuel and then material to immediately claim a building slot. But what about the other way? What if they chose to spend this material first? Well, this is where you can build another ship. You could build a starport. So let's say the starport wasn't here. They can then build a starport with their material and then use a fuel to catapult move. So this is something that you need to keep an eye on that if there is a fleet of ships, three or plus ships, and an empty building slot, your opponent may be waiting for a moment to use the material, build a starport, catapult out with the fuel, and then use their action pips from an aggression card or something like that. So a way to counter that is if someone is in an empty slot, they have all their ships here, you can blockade them by just moving one ship to the gate. So now red is really blocking in blue. Blue can only move into white, and red was able to do this by just moving one ship to the gate. So even if blue is able to build their starport here and even use a fuel, that fuel will only move them to the gate. So that's one way to counter this fuel and material combo, either by putting a ship in the gate or by just taking up the building slots before they can build a starport. Okay, the next combination we're gonna look at is fuel and weapons. So weapons is a unique resource in that it doesn't give you any prelude actions. Instead, it just gives your action card the battle action, meaning that you can do actions with construction cards, mobilization cards, administration cards, but you don't do that in your prelude, you do that in your normal action. So for red here, let's say red wants to do a big raid. What they can do is they can use their fuel, they're gonna use their fuel and they can use uh, the catapult movement from their starport and they can now move to any other player. So let's say they move to yellow and now they can use their weapons and they can use this four administration card or the two construction card that have more pips and use a bunch of battles or attacks or a repair. So that's just something to think about is that if you have someone with a fuel and a weapons, they now can easily use a low action card to take a bunch of attacks, meaning that what they may be waiting on if they have this fuel and weapons is for you to declare an ambition. And when you declare that ambition, you're putting the zero marker on your lead card. That now gives them one, a clue to what's gonna matter, because now they know what's gonna be worth points. And then two, it allows them to play this lower card with more pips, and now they can use a fuel and a weapon to easily go anywhere and attack. The thing to remember with this is that by controlling the gates, it makes fuel much weaker because the main strength with fuel is it's one move. And if that one move can get you anywhere on the map, great. If it can't, that fuel is not doing as much. Now, there are lower cards like sprinter drives or there are leaders that let you do additional moves and that can make fuel much better because now your fuel is doing more work. But in general, one way to mitigate fuel is by blocking the gates and by not allowing red to have a great area to catapult to or from, it makes it harder for red in this situation to now attack yellow. Now, if white is doing this, this makes white a clear target. So now white is the one who's going to be attacked. So this is one consideration for, do I want to block my neighbor from leaving because if I do that, then I'm the target. So blue could do this. It would make sense for blue to blockade this gate because now blue is putting a, um, a barrier from red leaving and now white is the target versus here, now red can escape and go anywhere besides five and six easily. Okay, our last main combination we're gonna look at today are two 
thionic resources. This is really, really uh, powerful, and it may not be clear why. So psionic says you take any action of the Lee card in your prelude. So this is kind of like a pseudo wild, but it's in your prelude. So remember when we said weapons, it doesn't take an action in your prelude. It's just giving you battle actions on any action card. Well, psionic can give you a battle in your prelude. So for instance, I lead with an aggression card. I play a psionic. That gives me a battle action in my prelude. If I do a raid, let's say we raid and we get shipping interest right here. So shipping interest has a prelude ability. I get this in the raid. I'm still in my prelude because I haven't taken any actions from my action card. I can now discard this and take all the fuel in my resource slots. So this is why psionics can be very, very powerful is that you are staying in your prelude. You, can, you don't have to spend all your resources at once. I can spend a psionic, do a battle, see what happens, decide to spend another psionic. I'm still in my prelude, see what happens. Another reason psionics are powerful is that if the lead card is aggression, one psionic can be a move, Another psionic can be a battle. Or, let's say these gates are blockaded. I now, as white, have two moves before I get to my three pips of attacks. So I can now move here and then here. Even though this was blockaded, my psionics got through this barrier and now I have three attacks on this really weak yellow city. Let's say it's non-aggression card. Let's say it's an admin card. This lets me tax. So let's say I was already here. I can then tax in my prelude, get this material resource, spend that material because I'm still in my prelude and I'm getting captives. Or I could tax my own city. So I can spend the psionic in my prelude with my admin card. I'm spending a psionic. I get a relic. Okay. So if I started with two psionic, I now have a psionic and a relic. I'm still in my prelude. I now can use the psionic relic combo. Even though I didn't start with a relic, because I had two psionics and the Lee card was administration card, I now can tax a relic, swap the psionic out for a relic, and now I can go into the court and take any court card I want. So that is why two psionics are so powerful, is that it's just versatile. You can use these psionics to take a very big battle, intense action in your final turn. You can use the psionics to switch them out for other things with tax actions in your prelude. So even um, if I had a fuel material plan I could tax, I could swap the psionic for fuel, this psionic for material, and now I'm doing the material fuel plan to catapult or move somewhere, build a city somewhere that no one is yet. Or same thing with the fuel and the weapons. I can swap these out if I can tax it. Then I can swap these psionics out in my prelude for other material, for other resources, and then use them in my prelude to do an unexpected action. So that is why uh, psionics, I think, are the best resources, that they're just very versatile, they're very powerful. And the more you have, the more options you have. If you have a bunch of material or a bunch of fuel, it is strong, but there's not a lot you can do differently. Versus psionic, there's a lot you can do differently depending on what the lead card is. Uh, what's a way around this? Uh, I think the main way you can get around this is by raiding the person with psionics. If you have a player who has more than one psionic, generally they're going to put it on one key resource slot in their, in their cargo hold. So that is how you can counter them is just by attacking them, raiding them, making them spend their psionics earlier than they intended. 
And that is is how I would pressure them so that they can't just wait until the final hand to spend all three or four psionics because they know that if they hold it for too long, you're going to raid them and take them away. So that's just something I would think about. If you see someone with two psionics, be mindful that whatever card you do, unless it's, I guess, generally construction or mobilization, um, they may not spend their psionics, but they, you spend an admin card. If you spend an aggression card as the lead card, you're opening a big window for them to do something very, very dangerous. All right, guys, that's all I had for you. I hope this was enjoyable and helpful. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.